Hey everybody, Steve Yegi here at Stevie Central doing what appears to be my 16 billionth take of this video. I'm going to be teaching you about CHOP or Chat Oriented Programming, which is a new way of programming that's come out using large language models. In contrast with the ways that we did programming in the old days, including book oriented programming, which is what we had when I started 35 to 40 years ago. And then we had Google come out and suddenly we had Google oriented programming or Goop. And then we had Stack Overflow come out and that was a big change. And then we had Stack Overflow oriented programming. And now, now it's chopped. It's completely changed. If you use Google as a programmer, you're in a failure mode at this point. Google means you failed to get the answer out of an LLM. And now you're desperate. A Google search, is, it reeks of desperation, as you'll see. So let's get to it. Very first thing I want to do is show you, hey, let's look at Claude. Claude is Anthropic's wonderful model. Uh, Claude 3.5 Sonnet might be the best model out there today. They're all really good. And one great thing about them is you can just you can just dump information into them with a, with a very rough guidance on what your problem is, and they'll figure it out. And if they don't, they can be nudged. So looking at this, these conversations, what are some of the things that I've done with CHOP in the last week? None of these were set up for your viewing. These are all, this is just me doing my work. I had to parse URL query parameters. I had to set up a web server package, debug some WebSocket communications. I had to normalize some windows with subsystem for Linux paths do some race conditions. As you can see, this covers the whole spectrum of programming here. CHOP is not just about generating code. CHOP is about your first stop is the LLM for everything, whether it's debugging or whether it's design or generating code, rewriting, whatever it is, you go to the LLM first. So starting here with, uh, let's take the testing one. Everybody knows how to generate unit tests and you all know what the problems are with generating unit tests with these models, right? They don't really generate them with, with your test framework in mind and with your best practices in mind. Now there are a lot of really smart people out there trying to solve that problem. But in the meantime, it's up to you to solve that problem. Programming is an iterative process. It always has been, and it remains an iterative process. You're going to get wrong answers from the models. Sometimes you'll get wrong answers and the model can't make any forward progress. It's rare, but it happens. And then you have to switch to a different model. But almost always the second model that you go to is going to get it right for you. So falling again, falling back to a Google search is a no, no. Okay. Don't reach for Google. So what I do, I said, I need to add some tests. Here's the code under test attached. We're only concerned with a static function from the companion object. And I typed that. Okay. Chop is, uh, it feels almost a little slow when you first start doing it, especially if you type slowly. It doesn't really matter though, because uh, in the fullness of time, you're, you're saving huge hunks of 30 to 40, 50 minutes at a time or longer. So it's actually worthwhile to take a little bit of time up front and type out what you want. It's you typing in this that's the slow part of CHOP, but it's okay because uh, you're going to find that it still saves you a ton of time, even if you're a little bit slow about it. So I said, here's the code I want to test. Here are the tests that I want to write. Go for it. And then wrote some tests for me, which is fine. They're just very generic, right? You know, Jupyter tests with annotations and whatnot. They don't match my tests, but it's a good start. The tests themselves actually look pretty good. So the second question I ask, I'm going to go over to the scroll bar here. As you can see, the scroll bar is nowhere near the, the bottom of the chat. This is a long chat for me generating the tests. What's the takeaway here? And, and I finally got them working and I actually got uh, the tests passing and I got the code fixed in order to make the tests pass at the bottom of this. But it took a long time. It is an iterative process. So expect during CHOP that you're going to have a conversation with the LLM. And you're going to be doing what I've typed out here in the 14 billionth take of this video. You're going to be doing winnowing, a lot of winnowing or narrowing of the space during CHOP. Because what happens is every time you say something, it blasts out a bunch of stuff. Okay, it says, oh, yeah, here's what you wanted. Here's some code and here's a bunch of stuff. And when you're doing design, there's even more of it. And often it will give you options here. Uh, let's see if there's an option for this. Um, I have a build system problem. Is that programming? Yeah, right. And so are you do use chop for it? Yes. So I'm having trouble uh, configuring the JDK in this thing. And it gives us a bunch of options, environment variables, Java home, refreshing, blah, blah, blah. Usually what I do is I'll just pick one of them. And, and so in this case here, you know, I, I do things like 
can you generate all of the tests for me? Because you know, sometimes the LM just is lazy and says, no, I'll do the rest for the rest of the code. You've seen that. Don't let it. Make the LLM do the work. If it doesn't do it the first, I can't tell you how many people I talked to after my last blog post who fundamentally think that CHOP is, I mean, imagine this. Imagine if some programmer came to you and said, and you're trying to say, look, Google search is really cool. We didn't have anything before that. All we had was books. And now you can search the internet. And they said, well, I did a search and I, I, asked, uh, I asked Google my question and it came up with the wrong answer. And therefore, Google's really dumb. Like, who says that? You know that you're not going to get the right answer the first time. You're digging for it. It's a tool to help you look. That's what CHOP is too. You don't just like put your arms back and go, well, I asked it to write tests and they were wrong. So therefore, LLMs are stupid. No, there is only one stupid person in, in this scenario and it's not the LLM. What you got to do is you got to look at the output and you got to say what you don't like about it and make it fix it until it's right. And as you can see, I did it over and over again. Use the annotations, put the EDT stuff back in, you dropped it. You know, even with Claude, it's gonna make mistakes, but we eventually got it to the point where my tests were running and they were failing because the code was wrong, which was wonderful, right? I had leveled up and now I was actually having it fix bugs in my code. And after that, we were all done and this chat was history and it went into our chat history. That's CHOP. That's how CHOP works. If you go back through my history, no question is too dumb, right? You'll ask things that you'd be embarrassed to have in your Google search, right? You're like, you know, how, do I, how do I boot Windows again or whatever, right? Any stupid question. You can ask it questions about the UI. You can take screenshots. You can say, okay, take a look at this right here and just drop it in, boom. They are, they're all multimodal. So don't bother typing stuff from your IDE. Just grab the screenshot and throw it in and go, please summarize these chats and, and have it do whatever you want. It can read images. This is really important. See, look, it worked. All I can say is if you're not doing CHOP, you're not doing it right today. In our next video, I'm going to actually solve a real world problem with CHOP. Now, solving a real world problem takes time. So we're going to, I'll probably edit it heavily and we'll see some of the highlights and the low lights. It's important that you see those too. You see where it fails, but I'll show you what you do. You don't give up and throw in the towel and go, oh, I'm going back to Google oriented programming. You know, no, you don't do that. You can figure out what went wrong and you push forward using CHOP because that's the right way to do it now. I suppose before we leave, I should make one last observation, which is that what I've been doing here is raw CHOP. That's what I call raw CHOP, meaning you either go to ChatGPT or Claude or Gemini, or you go and use your API key directly in, say, um, in your IDE. This, this is also raw chop. I have a uh, chat GPT. I have GPT-4 inside of my Emacs buffer here, which is a lovely place to have it. However, uh, let's be clear, chop is better with a coding assistant. There are all kinds of coding assistants out there. You, you've probably used them at this point, but if you're still using them for completions, if you're still thinking in that mode, then you're not really thinking about them right, okay? Because the, the real power from these coding assistants comes when you do chop. When you're asking the question, all that stuff I talked about, about you have to type your requirements and then you have to include context. Well, the inclusion of the, the correct context is handled for you by your coding assistant, which can be really, really handy. So it sits, CHOP sits right here in your IDE and you do the requests there. I'll be doing that in our third video. Our second video, I'm going to be doing raw chop because I want you all to understand that this has nothing to do per se with coding assistance. They just make it a little bit better.